Hello brother, sister Christ. Wanted to do a quick video, um, kind of a little bit of an update again on the, the ministry. The, things have slowed down, it usually does during the winter around here. We get a lot of rain, a lot of wind storms, uh, sometimes thunderstorms, um, ice storms, and uh, trees falling down. If, if, a, if a limb falls against a power line, I lose power. Sometimes I lose power for up to four or five days. And it's just, okay, I've gotten used to it. It's how it's part of living out here on the mountainside. But I had a gift to the ministry, and I wanted to share with the brethren what a brother and sister in Christ shared with me. Okay. Um, first thing, just I, I want to show these two things. I got this not from a brother in Christ, but from my actual brother. But when he heard about how bad it was this year, and windy and rainy and hardcore and everything, he sent me. He sent me this because I talk about the wood stove. Remember the prayer request, Brother Jesus Christ, for the wood stove? The Lord blessed me with the wood stove. It's, it's bought and paid for. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ, for your prayers and everything. And right now it's going to keep the house warm. It was sunny the last couple days. We uh, sat outside and did the prayer request video outside because it was partly sunny. Today it's all cloud cover, so it's very cold outside and it's very cold inside. So we start, usually I only do the wood stove in the evenings, um, unless it's really, really cold in the mornings, like we have no sun. Uh, so I've been running it more, uh, mornings and evenings when we have the rain and the cloud and everything. But he thought it was, he, he'd send me this, and I don't know if you can see it. I don't have a camera. I wish I had it set up with a camera. I could get closer. But it's a weatherproof lighter. <laughs> so when it's raining hardcore, I can still light fire and everything. But uh, notice it says weatherproof. I had to learn this the hard way. I've had watches. I only have one that I, that I use all the time. And some people will buy me more watches. And I had a collection there for a while. But I just wear one watch all the time until it wears out and completely falls apart. But you jump in a, if you drop that watch, it's water resistant. It's, it's not waterproof. It's water resistant. There are some waterproof watches. The diver's watches, they're expensive but they can actually go in the water and survive. But waterproof means that it can get water on it and it'll still do its job like this. It'll still light. It's weatherproof, but it's not waterproof. If you drop, when I used to sometimes dive into the water, like uh, the rivers when I was younger, and the lakes, uh, pools, and I forgot to take my watch off and I'm swimming in the water, after a while the watch stops working because it's not waterproof, it's water resistant. But if you were to drop it in the water and I yank it out of the water real quick, the watch usually would survive. So it's waterproof. Uh, a lot of you already know that, but I just thought it was interesting. A weatherproof lighter. Okay. So I can light even though it's raining, but, but the wood stove's inside, it's not outside. So I pray that the roof holds up. So good prayer request, I didn't put in the prayer request video is that this roof holds up. It's an old house. Uh, when it starts leaking, that's when you got to start doing a lot of work to fix it and everything. So far, the roof looks good. Uh, he gave me... I don't know if I want to take this out. Oh, hey! Because I already have one that I'm using, but he gave me another one. But it's basically... It's all plastic, but it's a rain jacket. And these are the best rain jackets for out here for the wind. These block the wind. Uh, they block the, the wetness, the rain. And these are the ones that have like gaps in them that let your body breathe because the one I'm using right now has no gaps. So when I put it on, you get really hot on the inside because it's just like having wrapping yourself in plastic, uh, rubber, you know. So this is a lot better one than the one I've gotten. But it was a gift. And I thank my brother for giving it to me. Uh, and, you know, he still talks to me for time. I still try to witness to him, try to lead him to Jesus Christ. But he's really hardcore into the, um, what do you call it, uh, education system. He's been going to college for, for several years now. For the past, I think, five, six years. I've been here six years. Probably going on seven years. He's just been going to college. Got his four-year degree in this, getting a two-year degree in that, master's in this. And he's really, he's really stuck in that system and everything. And trying to preach the gospel to him ain't easy. I still do it. I still tell me he's get saved. He's one of those people who claims to be a Christian, but all his stands line up with the world, and it doesn't line up with the Word of God. And anytime I try to talk to him about the Word of God, it doesn't work out. He'd rather have the world than our Lord and Savior. 
He's too worried about things down here, and he's not thinking of eternal things. Okay. So, wanted to show those two things. I thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't know, you know, weatherproof lighter. Lighters that, that it could be raining, and, you know, the mist and rain being thrown all over the place. As long as it's not soaking in water, it'll light and still light something. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, so, the Brother in Christ, they sent this. <laughs> Now Victoria can fit barely fit in this. This is kind of a little bit smaller than the ones that I've got, but it'll still work. And Victoria will love this. Okay. Um, there's a letter in there for me to read. I've got the letters here for the Brothers of Christ. I understand. I read the letters and everything. But they sent me a seat for Victoria, and right now, like I said, I'm gonna try to do a video. I've I mentioned it a little bit in the prayer request video, but I might. The way things are looking, this Friday, I will have another dog. Now, that dog's not going to replace Victoria, but Victoria doesn't have much, doesn't have that long to live, I don't believe. She's 15 now, going on 16, and her lifespan for her, her breed and everything is 17 years. God has blessed me that she's, she's, <laughs> you know, the Bible talks about running that race to the finish line. A lot of uh, miniature schnauzers like her will give out at 14 years. 13 years, 14 years, you start having problems. She's going the distance. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing from the Lord. Okay. One of these days we'll do a study on the difference between a blessing and a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a blessing. It's a blessing from the Lord. Okay. The miracle is if she lived 50 years. But she's supposed to live 17. Okay. And you can always give or take a couple years. But it's been a blessing. So we got the bed. We're going to open it up. And we're going to try to set it somewhere in the house. But we'll have two dogs. We'll have two schnauzers now. And like I said, this one's free. It's a blessing from the Lord. The reason I was kind of down, I'll tell you, Brothers of Christ, I was down a little bit because when I was looking at trying to get another miniature schnauzer, they're expensive. They're expensive. Okay. Um, I'm on a budget. And I live off of retirement. It's the reason I don't take donations because God provided clothes for me. He provided food for me. And with food and raiment, therewith be content. I'm not going to ask for donations from you and become about money when God's already providing for me. There are some men in ministry where God isn't providing an income for them and they do ask for donations. That's fine. I don't need any donations because God is providing. I need prayer. Okay, I need prayer. I need patience. You guys be patient with me. Please, please be patient with me. I do make mistakes sometimes. Um, and encouragement, exhor exhortation to encourage me through, I keep pointing this out because i got a lot of books up here, Point uh, encouraging me through the scriptures. Okay, in these last days, we're really hurting on true fellowship. Okay, true fellowship, which will be the next study we're going to be talking about. People all around you, but still so alone. Is what I'm going to try to title something along those lines, title this next study. People all around, but still alone, are still so lonely. Okay, because you're not really alone. God is always with you, and we're praying for you, brothers and Christ. We're praying for each other. But, um, but they're expensive. Uh, I think at one time when I was looking, uh, they, they had schnauzers that, once they've gone through all the medical stuff, and a little bit of a training and stuff like that, they were selling them for close to $2,000. And I'm like, to me, that, that's not in my budget. And that seems pretty extreme for something, you know, to me anyways. For some brethren out there, they, they're like, oh, this toy or that toy, it's that expensive. I've always been a hindrance. It just hinders me when something's just that outrageous. Um, to me, it's outrageous price. Uh, but to them, it's normal. They sell out every time. People pay that price. So it's not outrageous to the people as a whole, but to me, <laughs> you know, the outrageous. One time I, I saw that they were giving pups away, babies, for like 800 And still that's kind of like out of my budget. So I got blessed. The Lord blessed me. There was a family of breeders where they had a dog, and they're getting rid of the dog. And it's a three-year-old miniature schnauzer. It's gray and white. And it's, and he, it's a he, and he's beautiful. He's beautiful. And I pray that it works out, that I can get him here. He gets used to me because schnauzers are usually a one-person dog. They really get attached to one person, like Victoria's gotten attached to me. Um, I pray he's not too old, but he's, he's close to three years old. So we're going to see how it works, and I'm going to need more beds. Okay, So he can have beds, Victoria can have beds, and I'm going to have to learn how to deal with two dogs. <laughs> Instead of one, 
Uh, it's one thing I've babysat dogs before. It's one thing when you, you're just taking care of two dogs for a few days, but having two dogs that's on a permanent basis every day, it's going to be a little, a little different. So this, this gift to the ministry was also they sent me a lot of Bibles. Now, real quick, we're going to get into these. And people say, well, you're King James only, aren't you? And we're going to talk about some of these, because this is the New Testament 1526 edition translated by William Tyndale. Okay. Um, I want to show that in my collection, I have more Bibles other than a King James Bible. I do have other Bibles other than the King James Bible. Now, I got rid of all my Bible perversions, what I call Bible perversions, that come from the um, this right here. Okay, this is falling apart. It's very old. It's the Dewey Reams. This is the Bible. Okay, there's there's more than one Bible, but there's only one perfect written word of God, the King James Bible. Okay, don't be afraid to use the word Bible. Okay, don't you be afraid to use the word King James Bible. Don't be afraid to say authorized version. Okay, all we can say is the Holy Scriptures. God's not the author of confusion. If someone asks you, where can I find the, the, the Word of God, you better be saying the King James Bible, the authorized version. So that is not the author of confusion. Where is God's perfect written Word? Where can you find the Holy Scriptures? In the King James Bible, the authorized version. Okay. This is the Dewey Reams. I was blessed in finding this, and then after a while I got convicted I had all these Bible perversions, and God really wasn't calling me. Some brethren out there, God has called you to compare the, the Bible perversions to the King James Bible, and you, could, and you can show, like 33rd book, you can show the origins, we'll talk about here, um, the origins of all the Bible perversions, where they come from, the errors in the Bible perversions, how they attack our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and tear them down. God just didn't really call me. I'm trying so hard to hold on to the King James Bible and, hang, and hide King, the Word of God in my heart. I don't want to be uh, confused, you know, because I came from the Bible perversions. Um, so I gave up all the Bible perversions. I threw them out of my house because when someone comes here, I want them to see nothing but truth on this shelf. Okay, absolute truth. I don't want anything. When we have the catching away of the body of Christ is what I'm talking about. If I'm a little confused, I apologize for not getting my words across. If we have the catching away of the body of Christ and, and the lost world comes here, I don't want him to have it. Even if you put, because some of them will put uh, Bible perversion on it, but they don't know what that means. False. Now they kind of know what that means, but are they actually going to read the word false? Or are they going to open up the book and start reading through it going, hmm, this is pretty interesting. I'd rather not have the book at all. If you're done doing teaching on Bible version issues, get rid of your Bible perversions. Okay. But I wasn't doing really hardcore videos on the Bible version issue. So I got rid of all of them. I kept one. I kept one for this purpose that I have right here. Okay? So I can show when I do Bible version issue studies, or I even come across, like in this video, talking about the Bible version issue, you have this. There's only two Bibles out there. Okay? There's not 50. There's not 100. Uh, there's no telling how many. There's only two Bibles out there. The Dewey Reams came out before the King James Bible when they couldn't stop it from coming out. After the plot to blow up Parliament, okay, after they did everything they could to prevent the King James Bible, when they realized they couldn't prevent God's Word, perfect written Word, from getting out there, they decided to come out with their own Word. And nobody accepted this. They wanted truth. They weren't going to go to the Vatican. They weren't going to go to Catholicism that was killing millions and millions of Christians to get the Word of God. They wanted the Word of God in their hands. Absolute truth. The King James Bible. They forsook this. They, they or not forsook it. They said, I will have nothing to do with it. They'll have nothing to do with it. Today, the, this, is the, this is the NIV. Not this, but this is where the NIV came from. It's the same thing as the NIV. The NASB. All, of the, all those Bibles out there, the Bible perversions, go back to this. The, 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 the people, the saved uh, body of Christ, Bible-believing, God, God's Word-believing, okay, they believe in God's perfect written Word, they rejected this. But today, the average professing Christian out there loves this. They jump on it, they pound it, they love it. Why? Because, yea, hath God said. This always pushes, yea, hath God said. You're the final authority. This can conform to you. So if you don't like this one, there's some, there's one out there that you might like that will conform to you and tell you what you want to hear. 
That's what this is about. And I didn't waste money on a Nestle's Elan, but I came across this and used it. It says the New, Greek, New Testament in Greek, Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort. Okay. And you got the Nestle's Elan that's based, and I use this for teaching, the Nestle's Elan that's based off of less than 1% of all Greek extant manuscripts. You have the Texas Receptus. I have this, the Texas Receptus. I went ahead and bought one. Now, this one doesn't have the English along with it. It's all just Hebrew in the front and Greek in the back. Okay, I just wanted it for a prop. I don't read Hebrew and Greek. Hebrew, the, the original Hebrew has not is a language that hasn't been spoken in a long time. The Hebrew of today has been messed up with the world, perverted by the world. Uh, the Greek has not been spoken. It's not a spoken language today. Um, there's no one today that can speak it fluently like the translators could, but I use this as a, as, a, as a prop, a tool, to show that Nestle's Elan, all the other Bibles, less than 1%. The Texas Receptus is backed by over 99% of all Greek extant manuscripts. And I always tell people that prefer this. I got into it with somebody who's trying to defend Bible perversions, and he's using his own words, and his, he's his own authority. He doesn't have a perfect standard. And we're not going to get anywhere because we don't have the same standard. There's two different standards. Yea, hath God said, thus saith the Lord. That's a great way to say it, isn't it? Texas Receptus, thus saith the Lord. Nestle's Elan, yea, hath God said. Remember Jesus, he spoke as one with authority and not as the scribes? Less than 1%. Who's to say what God really meant to say? Well, you can a better rendering would be, okay, a better word would be, let's replace that word with this word, okay, over 99%, I always tell people, if you had a debt to pay, and you needed a solid gold bar, would you pick a gold bar that's less than 1% gold, and over 99% uh, worthless metal, or would you pick one that's over 99% solid gold? They take over the 99% solid gold in a heartbeat. But when it comes to this, why don't you choose this? Why are there people still choosing this? Because it appeals to them that ye hath God said. They can choose what they want to believe. They can choose what they want to get out of their life and what they want to keep. You know? Oh yeah, I'll give that up, but I ain't giving that up. That sin I'll give up, but I ain't giving up that sin. That idolat idolatry I'll give up, but I'm not giving up that idolatry. That worldliness I'll give up, but I'm not giving up that worldliness. Oh, I have no problem doing that. They want me, God wants me to pray before I eat. I'll do that. But pray without ceasing? I don't want to spend all day praying. You see? It's all about the man being the final authority and not thus saith the Lord. So that's why I keep these two there to, when I talk about this. Okay. This, as we're going to go through, these are from this. Uh, this is the New Testament, 1526, and we've got the Geneva Bible here. Okay, both came from this. But the problem was, is God's Word is never written by one man. It's not. Okay. God's Word is, it's godly inspired. Remember what the Bible says, that man spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God would verbally talk to us through His Son, whether it was the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, His name is revealed to us in the New Testament. He would speak to us directly through His body, His flesh, God manifest in the flesh, or He would speak to men through the Holy Ghost. Men were, uh, spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But this book was written by God through many men. Okay. Not one man. That's why I think the difference is, and we're going to get into this over here in a little bit. But I use this to say, okay, this represents all the Bible perversions. This is their desperate attempt to pervert the Word of God and get people back under the authority of man and not the authority of God. Okay, the fruits of the King James Bible. But I'm not going to, I like so. There's brethren out there that have done better videos when it comes to the Bible version issue. The King James Bible is God's perfect written word. Okay, but I want to start with this by saying you have this over here, you have this over here. Now, there was a brother in Christ, and I can't remember if it was Peter Ruckman or who it was, but someone I watched that had a great study, and it talks about, uh, the Bible talks about God's Word 
is pure as silver, as silver tried in the fire seven times. Seven times. And he goes through the seven attempts, seven attempts that the people needed God's word in, in the common language, seven attempts where they were coming from this Texas Receptus and trying to give the people the word of God. And when you got to this, the seventh attempt, it's perfect. It's done. It is finished. It's complete. This is God's perfect written word. And it was a great study. So I, I mention that because it's going to go through some of the gifts that I was given. Okay, I'm not against other Bibles that line up, that that was trying to line up with this. Okay, I'm against all the Bible perversions that come from the Nestle's Lawn, the Catholic Bibles, the New King James isn't a New King James, um, and so on. Okay. So this was a gift. That I was given, sorry for being long-winded, but this was the gift I was given. It's the New Testament 1526 edition, translated by William Tyndale, the first English Bible translated from the original, the original language. When it says that, it's talking about the Texas Receptus. Now I understand back when he was doing this, it wasn't called this Texas Receptus, but all the manuscripts that make up the Texas Receptus, what we call the Texas Receptus today, is what he used. He didn't use the garbage over here. Okay, the two Codus Sinaiticus, Sinaiticus and the something 70, I, I'm bad with the names, of it, but the two oldest and best garbage manuscripts that were so marked up and so corrected having so many errors in it, missing whole books, old chapters, whole book of Revelation. Oh, I wonder why it didn't have the whole book of Revelation, because it calls out the whore of Babylon, Catholicism. He was using this. Like I said, it wasn't called the Texas Receptus at this time, but he was using the manuscripts on this side. Okay. But he was doing his best to give the people the word. And that's a good endeavor. That's a good heart to have. That want the people to have God's word so they can hide God's word in their heart. Okay. Uh, God chose Hebrew for the Old Testament. And the book of Daniel uses um, Aramaic, I think it is. I hope I'm using the right term. But there's a couple different languages for Daniel because Mystery Babylon. It's not Mystery Babylon back then. It's actually Babylon back then. Um, they were in... Uh, under King Nebuchadnezzar. So the writing might have been a different language, and I believe it was. But it's predominantly Hebrew. The New Testament was Greek, not Latin. Don't be deceived by that. Oh, it's Latin too. No, it was Greek. It was 100% Greek. And they took that Greek and tried to translate it into Latin. Uh, they translated it into a language that the people didn't know and couldn't tell the difference if you were lying to them or not. They couldn't tell. Okay. Today we have a perfect written record. When someone's preaching or teaching, whether it's behind a camera, uh, behind a pulpit somewhere, in a Bible building, in a temple, we can say chapter and verse. We all have the same foundation. We can all read it. English is what God chose for the New Testament for today. Okay, Old and New Testament, but for His Word today, English is what He's chosen. Can you believe there's people that still fight me on that? I asked him, I said, what language do almost all the pilots of the world have to know? English. We have an English, uh, it's a pagan Roman calendar, but in English that the whole world uses for the most part. Uh, time is done by uh, English time. I remember Peter Ruppin doing a great study on that. English time and uh, location is English location. Um, you know, a lot of the world is based off of English. I've been all over the world. If you don't, if you're like, I'm not just saying it to say it because I'm repeating what someone else said. I've traveled all over the world, Brother Sis Christ. Everywhere I went, they spoke English and their native tongue. English was their second language. Everywhere. Australia, well that's obvious. Australia, English. Um, China, they spoke English and Chinese. I was in Thailand, they spoke English and the language that they spoke there. I was in the Philippines. They spoke, they spoke English and Tagala. Okay. I went to China. I was I stationed in uh, Okinawa for three years in the military, in the Air Force. They spoke, all of them spoke English and Japanese. Okay. Um, thank you. Arigato. Thank you.
right? Arigato gozaimasu, thank you very much. I had to learn some of the language when I was over there and I forgot a lot of it, but got some of it. But um, the point is, is they were trying to get a language that the world knew, English, while the Catholic Church wanted to keep it in Latin so the world could be ignorant. They had all the authority. And, they're, and if they were lying to you, you wouldn't know it. And come to find out when the Bi King James Bible finally came out, we had this that came out, and these books, these Bibles were burned. Uh, we're going to get into the Geneva Bible. Um, when they were, the God's Word came out, people could read it and say, wait a second, of course they want it in Latin because they are lying to us. The Catholic Church was lying to the people. It, they were saying, thus saith the Lord, but we go chapter and verse. I got into it with the guy, and I might use it for this next, uh, a couple more studies down the road. But he says he worships the Trinity. He doesn't worship a book. I don't worship a book. Like I said, I'm not a King James only. I've got other books on my shelf. In other words, he doesn't hide God's word in his heart. He's going to worship a pagan god. And they push this Trinity for years and years and years. And now we have a perfect standard, the Catholic Church. The Trinity goes way back before... Uh, before God's word was really given out to the people in and, and a common language, they were trying to push the Trinity, this pagan Trinity. This pagan Trinity goes all the way back to Mystery Babylon. Okay? Um, Isis, Horus, and Set is Egypt. So it went from Mystery Babylon through Egypt, through the Roman paganism, to the Catholic Church as it is today. And I'm trying to remember the beginning because my brain freezes sometimes, but uh, to Moot. Samaramis, Nimrod. Those are the first three. Nimrod, Tamuts, Samaramis. And then it became Isis, Horus, and Set, and the Egyptian, their pagan trinity. It's got to be three gods. Oh, but they're all one god. No, nope, it's three gods. Um, it goes all the way through. Okay, but now we got this. We go chapter and verse. Capital T Trinity is a title for God. That always trips them up. Chapter and verse. Well, if it doesn't come from here, where did you get it? They don't like that. They don't like this being the final authority. Even brethren that claimed, uh, some brethren that claimed to be brethren, claimed to be Bible believers, King James Bible believers, when you say chapter and verse, there's things they hold on to that have no basis in Scripture. Christmas? <laughs> I'll throw that in there, just a little stab. Chapter and verse? Not there. But I'm not a King James only, so I am going to add this to my collection uh, for the history of the King, how the King James Bible came about. Okay, this with William Tyndale played a big part in trying to get us where it opened the way and paved the way for a King James Bible to come out, for God's perfect written word in English to go out to the world. Okay. But this is a great gift to the ministry. Okay. I like this. I'm going to add it. And someday, like I said, I've never been called to do it. There's people like 33rd Book. Uh, Peter Ruckman's got some good books and good studies on the history of the Bible, how it came about. Okay, all the books that led up to the King James Bible that paved the way for us to have God's perfect written word. And I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, forgive me. One part I left out when I was saying earlier about God didn't want one man translating his word. I think it was 54 men. It took seven years. 54 men took seven years. Every verse had to go through seven tests. There was three different committees and three different spots and every verse had to pass seven tests. It took seven years. And by the end of the seven years, it was like, you know, 48 men. Okay. But it was more than one translator, and it's godly inspired. They were godly men. Okay. God never intended one person, but William Tyndale, his heart was in the right place. He wanted the people to have the word of God for themselves. Because he started, because he could read the word of God for himself. People couldn't speak Latin, but he could. The people couldn't do uh, uh, Greek, but he could. And he realized the Catholic Church was lying to people. They were deceiving people. He wanted the people to have the truth. His heart was in the right place. Now, these were my collection. I have the 15, uh, 1599 uh, Geneva audio Bible. I have it on audio, and I have this. It was a gift from a brother in Christ uh, way back when. Okay. So I have a Geneva Bible in my collection. Okay. Not King James only, but this is God's perfect written word. This is what I preach from because it's perfect. This is the final authority. This is the finished 
product. Okay. The silver tried in the fire seven times. One, two, there were some others all the way up to seven. It is finished. This is God's perfect written word. But this was the gift. <laughs> I love big Bibles. Um, the Bible of the Protestant Reformation, remember, Protestant Reformation, be careful. Protestant Reformation means they wanted to reform Catholicism. They didn't want to get away from it completely. A lot of things from Catholicism crept in through the Protestant Reformation and remained. And there's a lot of bad things in the, in the body of Christ today uh, that I call, you know, foreign matter, if you want to say. You know, the Bible talks about God spitting them out, spewing you out, foreign matter. There's a lot of foreign doctrine and foreign practices that are foreign to this, the Word of God, that are based off of the Reformation. They didn't want to do away with Catholicism. They just wanted to reform it. So a lot of Catholicism still crept its way in and kept its way in. Okay, building a building and calling it a church and inviting both saved and lost to it, that's Catholicism. Trinity, that's Catholicism. The word rapture, that's Catholicism. Okay, the Bible, it says, caught up. There's going to be a catching away of the body of Christ, not rapture. The Bible says it's the Godhead. The Godhead is God and the person singular of Jesus Christ. The Reformation kept a lot of junk from the Catholic Church because they just wanted to reform it. But they wanted to give you God's word. It was, it was a process that God used to get his word out there. The Geneva Bible, 1560 edition. So I have a 1599 audio. Let's look at this. I got a 1599 audio. And this is 1599 edition. Yep, here it is. 1599 Geneva Bible. So 1599, the actual physical, I prefer. I prefer this. I love audio. Don't get me wrong, I love audio, but you should have audio and a physical Bible, please. I have Alexander Scorvey, I listen to it all the time, but I make sure I'm opening this book right here and reading out of this book every morning and every evening, okay, before I go to bed, when I start my day, when I end my day, and then I listen to Alexander Scorvey during the day. I love both, but I think it's important for us to have this, okay, but this is a 1560 edition. It'll be interesting. Like I said, I might flip through it a little bit, but I don't spend a lot of time in this stuff. But I'll add it to my library, and I can use it. Like I said, if God ever calls me, or if somebody ever shows up, like a brother in Christ that's kind of curious about how we got the Bible, I'll have a lot of props to show them the process that God used to give us the perfect written word we have today, the King James Bible. Okay, like I said, all this stuff over here came from this, Texas Receptus. All the other Bible perversions came from the Nestle's Law that come from the Vatican, the Catholic Church. Everything else is garbage. Okay. Uh, in that gift, another thing he gave was the translators to the readers prefaced to the King James Version of the 1611, unabridged with the original spelling retained. Remember, they always said that this went through some revisions, and I'm not going to lie, it did. But those revisions weren't, okay, we got to change the translation. That wasn't the revisions. This garbage over here is always being revised. A, a better rendering would be, a better translation would be. That's this garbage over here. The King James Bible went through spelling corrections. They changed the font from the old Gothic font, and I think, I can't think, like the Roman font. Okay, the font was changed. Spelling was changed. They fixed some errors as far as uh, where periods were put places or commas were put places on accident. You look at the original, um, uh, when they were trying to first put it out, they made some uh, grammatical errors. Okay, Do I believe God led them in the spelling corrections and changing the font and everything? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is perfect. Okay, But remember... That's what they corrected. Don't let them deceive you when they say that because they won't tell you what was corrected. They'll just say the King James Bible went through some revisions and some corrections. But they won't say what was corrected. They'll act like it's the same thing over here where they're both just changing the Word of God all the time. It's not so. This hasn't changed. This has. This is always changing. This is now the same since the King James Bible. The finished product. Okay. 
So I gave you this in spelling. A lot of the King James Bibles that you get today don't have this. This book I got right here, and this is my favorite Bible that I use the most. Okay, it'll say translated of the original tongues with the former translation until they compared and revised by His Majesty's special command. Okay, yeah, this one does. This one has the letter, the translators to the reader. To the most high and mighty Prince James, by the grace of God. Okay, and it goes through. So this one has it, but some of my King James Bibles don't have it. But he gave me a pamphlet that actually has that. So you can sit here and read everything that the translators, the preface, were poor instruments. Okay, we're, not, we're nothing special, we're nothing great. To God be all the glory for what he allowed us to do. Over here you have them all puffed up. PhD, THD, I'm something, and I, 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 I did this, and I'm something, I'm someone great, and that's why I was chosen to be part of this committee to translate this, because I'm a scholar, and now we are poor instruments, poor, poor instruments to translate the Word of God. We're nothing. God is everything. That's the attitude of the King James Bible translators. Something to throw out there, too. But this was given to me it was a blessing, okay? I definitely will try to read through this. Okay, I've already read through it through here. I want to read through here, and I always like comparing things. Did this kind of sugarcoat it? Did it cut some of it out to make it fit in? Because they're trying to make the Bibles the weight. They're always worried about the weight of the Bibles. Uh, they are. When I bought the Bible over here, I can't show it, but the Bible on the bottom that has the giant lettering, they used weaker paper because it's lighter and it helped with the weight of the Bible, but that weaker paper was hard, it, it's just hard to, to highlight, and it's easy to tear when you're turning pages, it's easy to, it rips easier, because they're worried about the weight, okay? Instead of just making sure it has God's Word completely and fully, I mean, not God's, it does have God's Word, but I'm talking about, instead of just worrying about making sure it has everything you want it to have, and still use strong paper, even if it's a little bit heavier, they're worried about the weight, okay? So having this on the side to be able to, okay, I can share this with people, it will be great. I appreciate this, brother and sister in Christ. Right? The translators to the readers, preface to the King James Version of 1611, unabridged with original spelling retained. So anything that I read in here, I'm going to be like, God's helped me with spell check here, always correcting me. When I type something out, I'll misspell something, and my spelling's only gotten really good because of all the correction I get. Correction is good, brothers and sisters in Christ. Despite what the lost world says, correction is good. And through my correction, I'm learning. I type something out, I go, wait a second, that doesn't look like. Before it's even corrected by the computer, I'm like, that doesn't look right. And I take it back and redo it, and then the computer says, hey, it's spelled right. So when I'm reading through here, I might come across a lot of these words going, what is that? Oh, yeah, okay, i got to remember. They didn't do their spell check. They didn't correct the spelling. This is the old original, which is going to be great. Thank you, Brother Jesus Christ, for this. Okay, what my brother and sister Christ also did is uh, they gave me some old uh, renditions of the King James Bible. I have the Holy King, the Holy Bible 1611 edition King James Version. Okay, like I said, there was a time when this came out, another thing to say, it said Holy Bible because there was only one Bible accepted, the King James Bible. Now they have to say King James Version version because of all the Bible perversions that are out there. It used to be one holy Bible, one holy scripture, and there still is only one holy scripture. Don't get me wrong, there is only one holy scripture today. But that's why they got to say King James Version today. It used to be just holy Bible. I've got some old King James Version Bibles that don't say King James Version. They just say holy Bible because that's what God's word was back then. You want God's Word? It was the King James Version. That was it. This garbage over here wasn't accepted. It wasn't tolerated by God's people. Amen, amen, amen. Today, you have a lot of people professing to be God's people, but they prefer this garbage over here because, yea, hath God said, they can be their own final authority. They don't want to submit themselves to the authority of God. The final authority of God. So, got a King James Bible here. And there's a Holy King James, Holy Bible, King James Version. That's a deluxe gift Bible. Okay. Uh, Words of Christ in red. 
Fox leather lay flat binding. Thematic scripture. I don't know a lot of stuff, but thematic scripture verse find finder. Oh, um, one year Bible reading plan. Double column format. Ribbon marker. I felt bad because that Bible I showed you guys, the big one that's that really like it's the old, goes back to where it's King, it's King James Bible as far as it just looks like one of the ones you got a hundred years ago. It had two ribbons. One was already broken off it when I bought it. The second one finally ripped off last night <laughs> from use, which is good. But it finally ripped off. So now it's got no ribbons that are attached anymore. But it's saying it's got some ribbons attached. But, the, but I'll add these to the collection. And so you know, Brother Says Christ, I'll probably use these to hand out to people who want King James Bibles. Okay. And thank you for that help. Okay. So it's not just me. I can say the body of Christ is helping out with me distributing the King James Bible to those who want it. So thank you for these. Um, when I get to this right now, these are the two books that he that I was sent that I want to give a warning on. Okay, I, I probably won't keep them. I'm going to be honest with you. I probably, I'm definitely not going to keep this one. Okay. It says the Doors Bible illustration, 241 plates by Gustave Door, and what it is is they try to bring the Bible to life by making pictures. And I'm not going to show some of the pictures, but one of the things he really has an affinity for is drawing people naked. I don't know why. I mean, you have the flood, and he's got everyone naked in the flood. Okay? They've got angels with wings in here. Okay? I don't, I don't agree with that. But some of the pictures seem to be okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong. It's just they show angels with wings. They like to show nakedness. Babies are always naked, it seems. They show people being naked a lot. Like it's okay to draw naked people. Remember, Adam and Eve, they didn't know they were naked. They weren't ashamed because they didn't have the laws of God written on their heart. They didn't. When they had the laws of God written on their heart, they realized they were naked and it's a sin to be naked. And they were ashamed. Remember what the Bible says? Where there is no law, there is no transgression. They weren't in sin being naked when they didn't know. But once they knew, what they do? They sowed fig leaves. God made them, had to sacrifice an animal. Blood had to be shed because of their sin. Something had to die because of their sin. And he made coats for them. Okay? We're not supposed to be going around promoting nakedness. Like it's no big deal. So, like I said, a lot of these pictures are, are okay pictures to a point. But I came across some pictures in here that if there's a way to just do away with those pictures, I might still try to keep this. But my biggest thing is, is it's showing pictures of angels with wings when angels don't have wings. They try to make a, a Satan out to be a fallen angel. Remember, brothers and Christ, Satan's not a fallen angel. Okay? He's a fallen cherub. Cherub have wings. Angels don't have wings. Angels aren't little babies. Angels aren't women. Angels are young men. Anywhere between 20 and 30 years old. They're men. Okay, we've proven this in the scripture. Okay. But like I said, the thing that bothers me is the angels with the wings, the nakedness. And then when you get to the front and it starts showing Jesus, it shows the long-haired uh, Catholic Jesus. Okay. Now, at one point, I was like, uh, like Peter Ruckman, he would draw Jesus with the short curly hair and the beard and everything, the chalk talks. And I was like, well, that's a better rendering of Jesus, you know, than the Catholic Jesus. Why would Jesus tell us men aren't to have long hair and then he has long hair himself? Okay, yes, you had Samson, but they always try to justify the Jesus having long hair. But the Jesus that this is portraying with the long hair is actually, there was a picture Sean showed me of one of the Pope's sons is what they use as the template for the average drawing of Jesus today. And it's not Jesus at all. It's some Pope's son. Okay. But even with Peter Ruckman, in my studies of the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the Godhead. And we're not to liken the Godhead, and it goes through and talks about like building, making statues, making paintings, making videos. We're not to show an image of Jesus, what we think Jesus Christ looks like or should look like. We're not to do that. Why? Because God knew the deception 
that's going to go on. In the last days, there shall be many antichrists. The average Jesus that's professed out there has no basis in Scripture. The average Jesus that's portrayed out there, physically portrayed, image-wise, is not the Jesus of the King James Bible. Okay? I'd rather err on the side of caution. That's why I did away with any images of Jesus Christ in my house. Because there are a lot of them were the Catholic rendering of Jesus. Okay? The Bible says he was a plain man and he was nothing to look at. I forgot the words. Um, there is no uh, beauty in him that we should desire him. In other words, he wasn't some kind of, like these guys make him out to be some kind of like fashion model. He could be a model, you know, and he's this handsome man with this big glorious beard and just some handsome man with long hippie hair most of the time. Uh, woman's hair, in other words. The Bible says, I say hippie, but woman's hair, okay. Uh, that's not Jesus Christ. There's no beauty in him that we should desire him. He was a plain man. They looked at him and said, oh, the, he, he's just like all these other weird people, if you want to say, that just look, you know, plain, simple. You really couldn't pick him out of a group of, a, a crowd of men. He just, he blended in. He was, you know, there's no beauty that we should desire him. What made him stick out was his words and his actions. That's what made him stick out. Not his looks. Okay. So... Like I said, I'm grateful for the thought. I really am. I'm really grateful. But like I said, I started looking through this, and I went through and I made it to a couple pages, and you start seeing nudity left and right. Here's the world destroyed. I'm not going to show it to you. The world destroyed by water, uh, the deluge, and it's got everyone pretty much naked. For some reason, the, the artists that did the rendition of a lot of the stuff, they were also doing renditions of, you know, naked babies, naked men, you know, statues of naked people, and stuff like that. And it's like, do we really want this? Do, be, do we really want to be yoked up with this, in other words? So I might be getting rid of this. Okay, thanks for the offer, for brother. I know your heart was in the right place, but I'm telling you, the best thing to stick with is this. Let the Holy Spirit get get you help you with as you're reading to picture things. Okay. This lets you believe lets you picture things the way God says says things are. When you start getting into this stuff right here, it forces you to see things their way, the way they see it. This is what I believe it looked like back then, and then you have that look stuck in your head. For the longest time I had a hard time trying to get away from this fake Jesus, this uh, long-haired uh, model Jesus, this Catholic Jesus, and trying to get it out of my head that when I thought Jesus, I'd stop thinking of that picture. Because it was, images are easier to embed in here than just words. It's hard, it's hard to hide God's word in your heart and live it. It's easy to put images in your head. And it's hard to get them out. Very hard to get them out. So this, I don't think I'm going to keep. But I thank you for the, uh, you know... I'll still try to look through it again, but there's several things in there that I don't like. Because I believe it goes against the scriptures. Okay? The Bible says, it doesn't matter what the purpose is, the Bible says we're to abstain from all appearance of evil. Is nakedness evil? Yes. We're not supposed to be naked. If I saw somebody who was naked, my first heartfelt desire is going to buy them clothes. You remember Noah and his kids? One of his kids' first reaction was to look and go, ha, 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 and just look and just go, ha, ha, ha. The other two was like, we need to cover this up. We need to cover our father's nakedness. We need to get this fixed ASAP. The attitude of a Bible-believing, God-fearing man is, we don't, want, we don't like nakedness. I was spiritually naked, but physical nakedness, you need to cover up. And you look at this world, there's a lot of people out there that need to cover up. Okay. And please, you might say I'm just being over, how do you say it, being too much of a stickler. But with the angels not having wings. One of the things I was disappointed in Peter Ruckman is Peter Ruckman would say angels don't have wings. But he would conform, he would, uh, not conform, yeah conform, but he would compromise, that's the word. But he would compromise and draw angels with wings anyway. And he had his own reason why he would do it. Because people wouldn't know what they, you just point at it and say this is an angel. You can write angel. 
But you need to stick to the truth of the Word of God. He would always say angels don't have wings, but he would draw angels with wings. Same thing with David Daniel. He'll say that uh, chick publications, angels don't have wings, but he'll draw them with wings. Why? Because he's trying to please the world. He's fallen in the trap. Now, don't get me wrong. Peter Ruggman wasn't a hardcore pleaser of the world, but there's still some areas where he compromised. And you might call me a stickler, but when I say this is, when I find out what the truth is, I'm going to hold on to the truth, and I don't want the lies. I don't want images of angels with wings, because angels don't have wings. Okay? I don't want that in my life. Okay? When I found out that the cross is a curse, and we're supposed to take up our cross, and it's a spiritual thing, that hanging crosses around the house, you're turning into idols. I got rid of my crosses in the house. The cross I have and the cross I bear is here. And that's what we're supposed to do. It's not supposed to be just some idol hanging on the wall somewhere. It's a curse. Why do you have curses all through your house? Okay. But you read the Bible and you learn these things. Okay. I just don't want them in my life. So, brothers, I don't want this in my life. Okay. And I'll still advise you, brothers of Christ, that you probably shouldn't want, shouldn't have this in your own life, but I'm not going to beat you over the head. Stay in God's Word, and the Holy Spirit and God will do the rest to help you have the same attitude I do. Get that stuff out of your life. Here's another one. I haven't opened this one. I'm already weary about this for, for this reason, but it says, Holy Bible, the King James Version. Once again, it's illustrated. And... A lot of the King James Bibles I come across that are kids' version, that for kids, kids' Bibles, because it says kids' Bibles, they change the wording here and there to make it easier for kids to read it. So even though they claim it's King James, I had one that said it was a King James Bible and it's for kids. And I, I can't remember if I showed it or not, but I wound up burning it because they changed a lot in here to make it easier reading for the kids. The best Bible for a kid is this right here, the King James Bible. Not corrected, not changed. I'm not talking about spelling correction. I'm talking about changing the words and the phrases. A better, an easier rendering to read. Not a better rendering, but an easier rendering for the kids to read that's messing with God's Word. You're not giving your kids God's Word. So I'm always weary about this. The best, I tell you, brothers and Christ, the best Bible you can get for your kids is what I've got right here in my hands. Maybe they like the purple cover. they got purple covers. They've got red covers. But the best Bible you can get your kid is this. And have them read from this. And I, this is what I did, Brother Scratch, when it came to kids with my daughter before she passed away. What I used to do with my daughter is I would read to her this book. We would sit there in front of the TV where the computer was. And I was in the process of still giving up movies and Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games. God was working on me. I was newly saved. I would sit there every time she came to visit, and we'd go through the Old Testament stories, and we'd read them from here. And any time we came across something that was a physical image that we could look up, we would look it up on the computer. A great example is Noah and the Flood. We looked up different renditions of the Ark. Pictures of different renditions of the ark. We looked up all the different animals. She, some of her favorite animals we looked up. Okay. We looked up uh, the walls of Jericho. Okay. We, we, uh, we, we looked up things in the Bible. Okay. When we talk about Abraham and sheep, we looked up some sheep. Uh, when it talked about, um, I forgot the name of it, but something in the cleft of the rocks and it was talking about animals. I even wanted to know what that was. I learned a lot of stuff sitting there too when it came to places. We looked up places in the world. We looked up buildings. We looked up animals. We looked up all kinds of things. You can do that with your with your son or daughter when you're reading the work, but this is what you need to be reading them. This needs to be where you start, and this needs to be where you end. Okay? This gets them into the pictures, and they're not really getting into the words. The words are what matter, not the pictures. Okay, But like I said, in here they probably have pictures. I haven't looked yet. But from the cover, it looks like they have pictures of Jesus Christ. Like I said, we're not supposed to have images of Jesus Christ. Um, they probably have pictures of angels having wings. But like I said, I'm not throwing this out without looking. I will check it over. I haven't opened it yet. But I'm always worried when it says kids' Bibles. I'm always worried about the illustration. 
Okay, I'm always worried about how they dumb, they'll sometimes, without telling you, without telling you, they'll say this is a King James Version, and they'll dumb down and change the passage because it's a children's book, and they're trying to make it easier for children to read. Our children used to be smart enough to read this. And if they're not smart enough to read this because this has like a fifth or sixth grade reading level, if your child can't read this, then you need to bring up their education so they can read this. Don't, you don't dumb it down for them. You bring them up to this. So they're reading this. Okay. So this is one of the question ones. So Brothers of Christ, I thank you for this. I've even bought some myself at the used bookstore. It says King James Kids Book. I'll go through it and I'll try to see, okay, what do they do to it? And like I said, they tend to mess these up when they're children's books for the King James Version. But the other thing is the illustration. They throw a lot of things in the illustration that's a lie. And it's not true. Long-haired Jesus. Angels with wings. Be careful. They try to throw in nudity. Okay, be careful with that. So this was a gift to the ministry. I appreciate it, but I'm just being honest with you. I'm going to try to go through them again, but chances are... These are for the burn, are going to wind up in the burn barrel. I'm not going to, I don't want anybody else getting messed up by them. Okay. Um, two things that were, I wanted to finish with these because I just don't want to finish with negative. I'm sorry, just, brothers of Christ, we need to make sure that this is what we, our foundation is. We need to make sure, when's the last time you went through your bookshelf and said, okay, I need to go through and find out, do I need to get rid of some of this stuff? I was using it for, for teaching purposes, but I've already done my teachings. I've already done my videos. I'm not me. I'm just saying to you. If you've already done your videos, you've already done your teaching on it, should it be in your library anymore? Or should you get rid of it? Uh, probably should get rid of it. Like I said, we get caught up and the lost world comes in here. What do you want them to see? Author of confusion where they don't know right from wrong. Or you want everything in here to be good books that are true books based off of truth. Um, there's two of them here. Really nice cases. That say lion. Okay. This is how I am when I give. If someone looks like they, 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 I don't know how serious they are about the King James Bible. I'll give them one of these King James Bibles I get, one of the used ones I've got. But they come back to me with a Bible, and it's all like if I had someone come to me with a Bible, and it's all messed up from use. Because it's an old, cheap Bible. Even if it's a, it used to be a dime store, dollar store Bible. Now it's probably more than that. It's like two dollar store Bible. Um, and they just, oh, what, what about this over here, over here? And they're excited about God's Word. And the book they have looks like it's old and falling apart. I'll give them one of these nice ones. But when it comes to just handing out Bibles like I do to some of the poor people in town, um, I just give them these Bibles or some used Bibles that I come across. Okay. I ever come across them again, and they come up with to me with their Bible, which they, it's never happened yet. I pray it does. But, hey, I still have this Bible you gave me, and I was reading this part. I don't really don't get this part. Like, they're interested in the Word of God. Okay, then you give them something nice. Okay. But these are really nice. But they're still wrapped. I don't want to unwrap them, because like I said, I'll use these to give to brethren that don't have good Bibles. Uh, authorized King James Version includes the Epistle Dedicatory. Uh, it's Meriton Goatskin Cover. See, this is cow, I think cow. And then you have goat, sheep skin. This might be sheep, sheep skin. Uh, but this one's goat skin covered. Blue Under Gold Art Guild. Uh, 66 illustrations from Gustav Dora. Uh-oh. Gustav Dora. Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. uh, I guess I will have to open these up and look at them. Because um, I just read that part. Like I said, I'm really cautious about handing someone something that has sinful, wicked things in it. Okay. So, 60 illustrations from Gustav Dore. Be careful. Like I said, this, to me, when I see these pictures, all honesty, when I see these pictures, it, it makes me think Catholicism. It makes me think Catholic. I don't know why I'm... Maybe because they're the ones that came up with it, and that's probably true, the history. Um, but be careful, be careful. Easy to find cross-reference. Archaic words defined. <laughs> Archaic words um, defined. I just hope they have the right definition. Uh, defined concordance, line matching. Okay, full color maps. 
Sometimes you can get the full color maps. Make sure you get the right ones. Okay, I had a, Bible, a King James Bible where the map was wrong, showing the wrong crossing uh, for the Red Sea of uh, Moses and them. It was the wrong place. Okay. Um, full color map, which is good. Sewn bindings. That's what, good Bibles, good sewn. It's sewn. This Bible that I have here, it's sewn. It's not all glue and paper and glue, which you get with some of these Bibles right here, which is okay. They're too bad. But when you get your Bible that you want to have last your lifetime, I've had this you know, Bible since close to when I was saved. I had one before, and then I bought this one and gave that one away to somebody. And I've kept this one ever since as my main Bible. Okay, it's it's larger lettering, and it took, I got a Bible that took out all the um, footnotes, and a better rendering would be type stuff in the, in the footnotes. I had it all taken out, so it's just the King James Bible. That's all this is. No footnotes, no notes at the bottom, no notes in the center. I can make my own notes, but it it, it have applied this to be a larger lettering which I needed for my eyes, because the one before it was smaller lettering. But I love the sewing. I do, I love the sewing. My only fear now, like I said, when it says the 66 illustrations from Gustave Doré, so this is something that I'm going to have to go through and take a look at. Are those pictures okay, or do they have naked pictures? Do they have angels with wings? Remember, G um, Satan, he's not an angel, but he likes to transform himself into an angel of light. In other words, he likes to portray himself as an angel. Deception. It, that's what it is, is deception. He tries to portray himself as an angel, but Satan has wings. So when he tries to portray himself and pretend to be an angel, he's got to get people to believe angels have wings. See, I'm an angel. See, angels have wings. No, he's a fallen cherub. Okay, he's Satan. Okay, Lucifer. Okay. It's all about putting on a show. And an angel of light, someone who's smart, that you can listen to him. He can still listen to him. He's an angel of God, an angel of light. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. So, I got this, and I just wanted to make this. The video was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. Please forgive me, Brother Jesus Christ. But I got two of these to go through. But they're really nice Bibles. Where they're put together really well. Really well. But like I said, I don't want to... We're not supposed to put a stumbling block in front of the brethren. We're not supposed to promote something that doesn't line up with this book. We're supposed to be promoting truth. Okay. So I'm going to go through these and I'm going to try to look them over. But I just saw that and got really down because I was really excited about these. So I'll look through them again and try to figure it out. But uh, remember, King James Bible is God's perfect written word. Uh, I still have the P.O. box. I'll put the P.O. box in the... In the um, description box again I have an email you can email me there's a sister in Christ you know who you are that emailed me a letter I have that letter I put something together I'm gonna to try to get it out in the next couple of days um, but I have an email to the ministry I have a PO box to the ministry you want to write me a letter send me a letter you don't have to send me any gifts this is a blessing this is a blessing. I love this stuff I really do I love having Bibles to add to the collection to be able to hand out Bibles. I don't want them sitting there gathering dust. I want to be able to hand them out. Okay? I really do. So, thanks for the Bibles to, to hand out and everything. But, Brother and Sister Christ, make sure that this is what you have. A King James Bible. Brother and Sister Christ, make sure you're staying in the King James Bible every day. But I want to read some scripture because I feel like I've done nothing if I haven't quoted some scriptures <laughs> in a video. But, the Bible says... Uh, st uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? God's words are pure words. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I think that's Psalms 1-1. Okay? Um, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Brother, I just got finished watching a study real quick. I got finished watching a study that Peter Ruckman did on the powerless Christian, and he, pretty good study. And the first, he had three blocks that help you be a powerful Christian, and it all comes through the Word of God. We learn it through the Word of God. But one is a desire to please God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That pleases God. 
taking His Word, hiding it in your heart, and living it, and doing your best to stay away from what God says is sin. Not your feelings and opinions, what the world says is right and wrong, but what God says is sin, getting it out of your life. Okay, a heartfelt desire to please God. The other one was uh, a heart, uh, an attitude to do the will of God. A heartfelt desire to do the will of God. So to please God, then a heartfelt to do the will of God. What's one of the wills of God? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know, the ministry of reconciliation. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ, so on and so on. Okay, having a heartfelt desire to please God, having a heartfelt desire to do the will of God. And the last thing you put on heart is a strong prayer life. And through these things, God will give you power in your life as a Christian. The reason a lot of the Christians today, especially men in ministry, that are failing the Lord and they don't have much power anymore is because their heartfelt desire isn't to please God. It's to please their family members, to please the men around them, to please themselves living their dream life, okay? Letting things back into their life that they want, I want, me, 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 I, I, I. It's no longer about pleasing God, it's about pleasing themselves. They're self-pleasers. And a heartfelt desire to do the will of God. Men in ministry, some of them, the ministry takes a back seat. It becomes a, a job, a way to make money, an income. It's no longer a life calling. And you have that heartfelt desire to do the will of God. It has to do with my way, not God's way, my way. Things down here become more important than things up there. Eternal things. Okay? They want their rewards down here. They want their best life down here. And they forget about up there. They want, like I said, they want to start doing things their way. See, Brother Scott, this is so important. That this is what's being hidden in your heart. And what I mean by hiding in your heart, you can have it in your head. I've said this so many times. What's the difference between having it here and having it here? You can know the Word of God. You, I know people who are lost that can quote the King James Bible. It's, they say it's not God's perfect written Word, but they can quote it from memory. They have it here, but they don't have it here. Why? Because they don't want to live it. There's things in here that tell them that what they're doing is wrong, how they're living is wrong, their priorities are wrong, their focus is wrong. They're being distracted by worldly things, their priorities. They want security down here. What about your security up there? Why don't you trust God down here and worry about a, your eternity up there? It was a great study. I really loved that study. But it all starts with this, brothers of Christ. You get truly saved and born again. The first thing you give someone who gets saved is a good King James Bible. And so I thank the brethren for this. Okay, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I thank my brother for that too, for the rain stuff. So brothers of Christ, I'm here. I've got a, a P.O. box. I've got an email. I'm here. Okay. I pray for you, brothers of Christ. I pray for your walk with the Lord in these last days. My biggest prayer is that you stay in the Word of God, you keep hiding it in your heart, and you keep living it, and you keep praying a strong prayer life. And now I'm going to start throwing those specifics in. Uh, desire that you still keep that strong desire. When you first got saved, do you remember, brothers of Christ, when you first got saved, you had this hardcore desire to please God. Some people fizzle out after they get saved. Why? Because they're like, I want to please God, and then you open the... I have to go up that, uh, 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 but Lord, but, uh, and your heartfelt desire to please God just kind of fizzles. But I want my flesh, please. I love that. I ain't giving that up. I love that, Lord. I ain't giving it. Come on. Come on, Lord. You're, you, that's just, you're being too technical. People are just being too technical. That heartfelt desire to please God just fizzles out. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, body, and I think it's mind, body, and soul. You know that you're, uh, the, you're bought with a price, you're not your own? Are you in Christ Jesus our Lord? Do you belong to the Lord? Is your whole life about pleasing the Lord and glorifying the Lord? In all things you're supposed to give God glory, in all things you're supposed to give God thanks.
Brother says, Christ, I'm praying for you that you still have that hardcore, heartfelt desire to please God. Sin doesn't please God. Okay? False idols don't please God. Worldliness doesn't please God. Okay? The number one thing that's going to please God and help you in your life is staying in this book and reading it every day. Start your day with the Word of God. End your day with the Word of God. Start your day talking to the Lord. End your and, th and talk to the Lord throughout the whole day. And end your day talking to the Lord. A strong prayer life, a strong Bible reading and studying life, and that strong heartfelt desire to please God and to do the will of God. That needs to stay strong. And a lot of brethren in these last days, it seems to be fizzling out. Just fizzling out. You're just barely getting by. We need to get back to those days where you were on fire for the Lord with your life, okay, and how to live for Him every day. So I'm praying that for you, and I want that prayer for me. I'm not just pointing at you, brothers and Christ. I'm pointing at this man right here. There's days where I do feel like I'm fizzling out, and God has to light a fire under my feet, okay? Get me moving again, okay? That prayer needs to be for everybody, including this man right here. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for these gifts. Thank you for your prayers. Keep fighting the good fight and I'll see you in the next video.